nice that we have this as a, as a remembrance. Andy Dice Clay singing on 31st Street and 3rd Avenue. You see the sign in the back of them? One is me as a young man coming off the stage. <laughs> Here's Cliff Lawrence doing his impression. A long time. I am Rico, married to a beautiful woman, Dorothy. I have two for 55 years. I have two children and two grandchildren, and uh, living in uh, Deja Village for nine, ten years and enjoying it. I enjoy dancing, I enjoy pickleball, I enjoy bocce, ping pong, and especially dancing with my lovely wife who is a very good dancer. And uh, we met, believe it or not, we met at a club when I was dancing and she came to see me and uh, she came back a couple of times and finally I asked her for a telephone number and uh, she gave it to me. And uh, we went out, we enjoyed each other, got engaged and got married and enjoyed each other very much. On my 70th birthday, Cliff Lawrence, who was one of our performers, put it on Facebook about my birthday and I was surprised to receive birthday uh, cards and calls and good wishes from all over the country. And, and it made me think about all the performers that appeared at the good times. So when I sat in front of the computer, it, it just was uh, magical that one performer came to mind and then the next performer came to mind. And it was amazing that not only the performers that I remember, but I remember the jokes they did. And it, it was a no-no that if you appeared at the club to use uh, a joke that another performer did, you, that you couldn't do that. So in the book, Beside when we auditioned uh, 25 performers a night and we picked out one or two that we thought was going to be a success because they had the desire to do it, I remember them and I remember the jokes uh, like Brad Garrett. And the Emmy goes to Brad Garrett. Everybody loves Raymond. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you, the Academy. Thank you, John. Why don't you hop on my back and we'll do a scene out of Sea Biscuit? I, I'm home, Lily. <laughs> and uh, Jerry Seinfeld. And they had Neil Armstrong's toothbrush. The guy landed on the moon. They had his toothbrush there in a glass case. Now, I wouldn't make that up. It's too stupid to make up. <laughs> Underneath the toothbrush, it said, "On loan from Neil Armstrong." <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure. And apologizing for this next performance. <laughs> Will you please welcome Jerry Steinfeld? Okay. Jerry Steinfeld. <laughs> Eddie Palmieri and Eddie Palmieri, musician of the year. Thank you. 
God, it, 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 the list goes on and on. And to see them when they were very, very young, and to see them grow, and I hate to see them, they got older, but they did. And one example was when uh, Dorothy said, we're having a special show uh, coming up. I think we ought to pay one of the performers. And this is one of the items I put in the book. And Dorothy said, uh, uh, what about that fellow over there? Maybe we should pay him. And I said, he's a very nice fella. He's uh, intelligent, very respectful, but he's not funny. And that was Jerry Seinfeld. We gave him $25, but though I emceed the um, comedy club for 10 years, and some say I was very good at it, I never had the inspiration of being a performer, or a professional performer, uh, because you gotta have the desire. And uh, I never had the desire to be a performer, but it was a pleasure to see others grow and become a, a professional performer and then see them either on television or see them on Atlantic City that was the the blessing uh, no the answer is no I never had the inspiration of being a performer and so I loved uh, entertainment well we went to Atlantic City to see three other comics Jerry Seinfeld was appearing there and good Lord, we tried to get tickets, but I think he was getting $135 a ticket and he was sold out. So I said to the, uh, the gentleman that was watching the door, I said, can you give this message to Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah, Dorothy and I, good times and we wish him luck. And uh, that was it. This is all very confusing. <laughs> never thought he said he'll never get this message because he's going on in a couple of minutes so I said well I'll try it anyway we came home that evening and the answering machine was blinking and I said who is this and and the answering machine went like Rico it's Jerry Seinfeld of course I remember you you gave me $25 in 1977 and I still have the money and that was incredible he was worth millions at the time and the fact that he still has the $25 is amazing it shows you what that money meant to him and to other performers that finally got paid and uh, we were very happy to hear from him and it was wonderful and the list goes on and on and on. In your 30s, it's very hard to make a new friend. But whatever the group is that you've got now, that's who you're going with. You're not interviewing, you're not looking at any new people, you're not interested in any seeing any applications. They don't know the places, they don't know the foods, they don't know the activities. If I meet a guy in a club or a gym or something, hey, look, I'm sure you're a very nice person, you seem to have a lot of potential, we're just not hiring right now. <laughs> of course, when you're a kid, you can be friends with anybody. You remember when you were a little kid, what are the qualifications? If someone's in front of my house now, that's my friend. They're my friend. Well, I used to follow the dance, uh, the dance bands, Tito Puente, Rodriguez, Eddie Palmieri. And believe it or not, I, I look in the paper and find out where they're performing, and I would get a partner, and I'd go down there and dance, and uh, the Playa Sextet, oh God, those... Those were the Latin bands that I loved, and uh, that's what I, I truly love doing because the Latin music has the rhythm to get you going, and uh, that's what it was. I, uh, I went from club to club, and uh, occasionally I went into Dorothy, and got her on a dance floor, and we danced together. We've been dancing for 55 years, and uh, some say we're good at it, but we enjoy doing it.
after the good times, it was almost like fate that the day that the good times closed, we received a call from the gentleman that owned a theater on East 61st Street called Theater East. It was an off-Broadway uh, production called Forbidden Broadway. It ran, uh, how long, I think, 16 years? Oh, longest running off-Broadway show ever. The longest Broadway show ever. And what it did was it took the show on Broadway and it made fun of him. Not only did it make fun of the show, but it made fun of the performer. Uh, who was the performer that came in and she got very upset and she walked out, uh, Turner. So uh, it was a classic and uh, we ran it for 10 years and then I, I retired and uh, Dorothy went on to other things. She, she did some paintings and uh, I was hoping that she would get involved in the uh, painting end of it because you're a very, very talented woman as far as that goes. In fact, we still have some of her pictures and, uh, but she, and she didn't have the passion. <laughs> the, I love that word that she uses, the passion for being an artist, but. You should have also said that um, at the theater, we were in charge of bringing in other oh. shows when Forbidden Broadway was not on. That is correct. I listed, I listed the show when uh, Forbidden Broadway it had its run after, God knows, 18 years. I don't no. know, they must have been 10 years at the theater. Forbidden Broadway ran. Forever. God knows it might still be running. Uh, we were in charge of bringing other shows in. Uh, Martin Charnin came to us and uh, uh, he was the, uh, the producer, director, no. finder. He was, uh, he was the creator. The creator, okay. Annie. My wife loves that. The her. producer yeah. was Mike Nichols. The producer was Mike Nichols. The winner is Mike Nichols. And he was a creator. He came to us for a production called Loose Slips. And Dorothy and I didn't think that was going to run. And it didn't. But we brought in a lot of great shows, children's shows, uh, uh, other productions. Uh, uh, my, my year. Uh, and that was very, that was successful. But... Uh, yeah, we we bought it. We must have bought in about uh, 25 shows after Forbidden Broadway, and uh, like I said, we were there for 10 years. And uh, I'm writing a book about all the performers that came in there. The when I say performers, I mean major performers that were on Broadway, and uh, some of like. Uh, uh, I got the pictures, some of the pictures of him, uh, and um, it was um, it was fun putting that one together. That'll be out shortly. Some of the pair of performers that came to uh, Theater East, which will be appearing in my my new book. I just happen to have a, a list of a, a small list of them. Dom DeLuise with my son, my Adam. My handsome son. My handsome son. Very and handsome. myself, Maya Koch at the time. Imagine a mayor coming in. Uh, Joe Franklin, he had his own show at the time. And TV very show. good. Dustin Hoffman with his son, okay. And uh, 
as my son again, B. Arthur from the Golden Girls. Oh, boy, it is hell out Oh, it must be at least 103, and the mall was impossible. Did you get something for the grandchildren? Oh, please. You know, Robbie wants a Batman hat. I went to six different stores. They were all sold out. I finally went to one store where they had one hat left, and another woman saw it. Oh, I cannot believe a person would push a perfect stranger out of the way, step on her hand, and give her an elbow to the forehead just for a Batman hat. But I did it anyway. <laughs> She was in there, and she came in, and what I did, I had them sign the wall. You can see Jane Powell reaching up and signing the wall, and it was a very funny thing about Jane Powell. She was a little cold, and I gave her my jacket, and I said, Jane, I tell you honestly, I'm thrilled the fact that you're putting on my jacket. I'll remember that for a long, long time that Jane Powell wore my jacket. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned Dustin Hoffman again with his, with his kid. I'm very pleased to tell you the nominees for outstanding performance by an actor in a leading role. And to remind you that each of them has given the screen a remarkable body of work during their careers. Those nominees are Dustin Hoffman. From the young Benjamin of The Graduate, the unforgettable Ratso Rizzo and Midnight Cowboy, and on through the centenarian Indian chief in Little Big Man, the strange and courageous prisoner in Papillon, the charismatic and controversial Lenny Bruce, and the brilliant reporter in All the President's Men, and now this year, Kramer versus Kramer. And uh, was he upset when uh, you charged him <laughs> to come in? <laughs> no. No, that wasn't him. Well, this is just a few of the performers. That, uh, when I say performers, they were professionals that appeared on Broadway. They came in to see Forbidden Broadway and making fun of the uh, show that they were in. And uh, it, it lasted so long. But I got to point out to this gentleman here, Dom DeLuise. What a gentleman, what a class act he was. And uh, he took the time out to take a picture of my, my son and myself. And the others were always more than happy to sign, be out there signing the, uh, the wall. And I must have had about 50 perform, 50, which will be appearing in a book also of the autographs. And uh, that, that book, uh, After the Good Times, I'm glad that you're here to talk about it, uh, Ricardo, because it was very much, it meant very much to Dorothy and I, because we spent 10 years with the, uh, the theater east until that, I think uh, Forbidden Broadway went out and then we brought in about 25 different shows and then we, I guess we retired also. I produced several shows also for Theater East. Um, some really fun shows. Love doing it. I worked with some terrific people on the shows, fly paper, things my mother never told me, uh, several different shows. And I love doing it. We proudly present Otto and George. It's really great to be here tonight. My name is Otto Peterson. This is my good friend, George Dudley. How you doing, George? Nervous? Hey, I got to work with your hand in my ass. I'm fucking uncomfortable here. <laughs> I got to take a shit and everything. Please welcome the godfather of comedy, George Wallace. Yeah. Come on, make some more noise. This is Las Vegas. Make some noise.
Montreal, I'm back. You remember me? Please, enough. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Jazz Palm and Terry. In uh, 1989, I wrote a five minute monologue at my theater workshop about uh, a killing that I saw when I was nine years old sitting on the, in my stoop in the Bronx. And I performed it for my theater workshop. And everybody seemed to really like it a lot. So each week I would go back and write another 10 minutes, another 10 minutes, another 20 minutes. And about, at the end of about 10 months, I had an hour and 40 minute one man show. I got it produced and I performed it here in Hollywood. And Bob came to see it. And we met afterwards and we talked. And then we met again. And, and I remember at the end of our second meeting, he looked at me and he said, you know, Chaz, a lot of people in Hollywood want to make this movie, and you can make it with a lot of people, but let me tell you something right now. If you make it with me, I'll make it f***ing right. There's a park by my house called Union Square. About four days ago, I was cutting through it. There's a nice couple, a lot of tourists in town. They're looking at a map of Manhattan. Being a good guy, I go, where you guys looking to go? <gasps> Are you from New York? Yeah, where you looking to go? Well. We've never been here. I go, why don't you shut the fuck up? Do you remember the old days when you heard someone say total recall and meant that someone had a good memory? <laughs> remember that? And you know, about what? Six, eight weeks ago, General Motors recalled 248,000 cars. A minor problem. <laughs> minor. When you step on the brakes, they don't stop. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, this sounds like a commercial. Dorothy has the book, and uh, she's got to tell you where we can get where you can get it. Yeah. On Amazon, on the internet, I believe. Yeah. Yes. And we'd be more than happy to those who have a book to sign it, autograph it, Dorothy and I, and uh, if that's makes any difference to anybody. And may, who knows, maybe 50 years from now, the book might be worth something. 